Good morning everybody, welcome to Hunky Dory TV and to one of our new um, style shows which is of course Technique Tuesday. So we are going to run um, kind of a monthly um, show where we are going to be using different techniques, using lots of our different products and there'll be different demonstrators and we'll all be having a go and um, so it's just something quite new. This is the first show so um, do bear with us, it's just myself and lovely Emily producing today so Emily is mic'd up as well today so we are hoping that if you have any questions or you want to come you know just chat about things and um, we've got um, some of the team who are answering your questions as well while we are crafting and also Emily might just be um, sending questions across to me as well so that I can answer them um, if I can I will um, so first of all what we're going to be doing is we're going to sh be showing you some how to's and how not to's um, although that you know you never know it could things can go wrong when you're crafting <laughs> We call them happy accidents or we like to just think it's a learning curve and sometimes you go, oh, I've scored it there. I should have scored it there. So anyway, I'm waffling. So let's get on. Um, we must remind you, of course, of our pick of the week, which we um, showed you yesterday. Myself and Natalie were here with Dan, showed you our beautiful rose quartz pick of the week. We have a really big bundle there, which has got toppers, inserts, uh, papers, cards everything at uh, 39.96 so you're saving 12 pound it's a beautiful kit as you saw yesterday um so that is our pick of the week and that will be running for the rest of the week um but first of all let's let you know what's coming up on today's show so first of all we are going to have kind of a beginner's class so we're going to be talking around the scoreboard showing you the scoreboard explaining a few things and we're going to have top tips which i think are going to be running through the whole hour um things are going to spark my my ideas for tips and yours i'm sure as well so we'll be doing that too then we're going to have um an intermediate demo um showing you all kinds of different techniques we're going to have um well it says on there expert demo i don't like to think of myself as an expert but I'm just like like everyone that um, joy, enjoys crafting. I'm just a crafter, um, but I <laughs> um, but I've been doing it for a long time since I was very very tiny. So I craft myself. Uh, I, I not craft myself. I do craft myself, obviously, but I um, class myself as just um, probably an experienced crafter. And then at the end of the show, I'm going to be setting you a homework challenge. And if you want to partake in that, you can. If you don't want to, it's absolutely fine. But we just want to keep you um, interacting with us as well as we go through. So uh, also yesterday, we um, we launched our brand new Win It Weekly competition. Um, and you can win which we didn't have to hand yesterday, but I do now. And it's quite heavy, so I'm going to pick it up. You can be in with a chance of winning the Life of Leisure Designer Decollage Kit. This is a massive kit. It's beautiful. It's got all 12 of the decollage sets um, with two of each, and you're going to get the uh, printed and the foil cardstock as well with this. It's absolutely divine, um, and it's it's great. It's got lots of sport uh, themes in, gardening, things like that. Perfect for the males in our, our lives who we find a bit difficult to craft for sometimes. So it's a really, really lovely kit. It's worth $24.99. We are going to have four winners and they will be announced on the show on Friday. So if you would like to uh, enter, there is the question now and it is, what was the first Disney film? Was it A, Snow White and Seven Dwarves, B, Pinocchio or C, Bambi? I'm sure a lot of you will already know that without researching it, but you have got the option these days to research it and be in with a good chance of winning. Um, so there you have it. So, um, that is our question, and then now we are going to go on to our crafting with our fabulous scoreboard. Just to stop you there, Sheila. Okay. Sorry. Um, everyone's saying that your mic is a bit funny. Is it? Is it? Um, it is on, isn't it? Because I've switched it no, on. No, you definitely are. Is it? Is it crackly or is it's, it? Yeah, it's fuzzy. It's not. It's not my hair that's catching on it, is it? Because sometimes my hair catches. Let me move it down a little bit. If you can let us know if that's any better, um, then because we don't want you to miss anything. Um, we can't hear you. See, we can just hear my chatty voice, and we can hear Emily's voice but we can't hear what it actually sounds like in the in the studio here um so 
does it sound better if you can let us know that would be very very much appreciated it'd be it'd actually help if i spoke wouldn't it <laughs> to do it to do a microphone test you need to speak so it would be helpful if oh, i spoke every, everyone's saying it's better is it, it better must just be the way it was do you know it, it might be where it was or it might have been my hair that was kind of just tickling on it if i don't put it you know kind of more central my hair drops down and um and then it causes interference so let us know though if there's any crackles or any popping or any strange noises or you can't hear us do just drop us a line and emily will fix it so what we are going to do today we are going to show you um for those of you who haven't got the scoreboard we're going to show you around the scoreboard for those of you that have got it we're going to hopefully try and give you a few ideas of different ways of using it and a few tips um i do have as well handed to me yesterday by our uh, managing director mr daniel newhouse who was in here yesterday he has actually given me some useful information all about the scoreboard so features and benefits let's do that first for those of you who haven't got one and are hoping to buy one whether you go for the small one or the large one um i'm going to show it to you now i'm going to just talk a little bit about it first of all so that you have got an idea what it is um so first of all double-sided which is perfect because it means on one side we have inches and we flick it round on the other side we have centimeters um which is perfect because i know a lot of you work in metric or imperial and this will work for you so we have increments as small as an eighth of an inch and 0.5 centimeters so that's that's pretty good that's going to give you uh, nice tight folds if you're wanting to do concertina um uh, like rosettes and things like that then that's good for that we've also got um indents at the top edge to allow full page scoring so you'll see we've got indents along the top here which is um where you put your pokey tool so you put your pokey tool not your pokey tool sorry your scoring tool in the indentation and slide it down we don't have these at the bottom because if you want to score something the size of a3 or bigger than 12 by 12 which you can do on here it actually means as long as you keep your cardstock flush with the edges you can actually move it up and score down a longer piece of card so that's why we don't have the indents at the bottom the score lines just end but there's nothing at the bottom to stop you going further and it allows you to move your card up and down so the center point as well is marked on here easily um so that you can you know you've got a zero here above the six so it means you can um, find the center of your cardstock we've also got on here the built-in box making technology which means um that you can put two pieces of card the same size on here to make a box and a lid so for example if you place your card down the left hand side and you'll notice it says here um lid that's the piece that's the side that you make your lid on and then you make your base on the right hand side and it prompts you on both sides box base box lid so you kind of um don't get it mixed up you don't get it wrong it's really really helpful it's it's a little detail but it's at the same time it's a massive uh detail and a massive advantage when it comes to making boxes um you've got the handle for portability which is fabulous it's also great for using on your lap um very often i um have not got room on my lap so what i do I, I sit it on the end of it on my lap and i rest it against the table like this and i use you know i score it that way but don't forget as well i'll be showing you as well as we move along we have our 12 by 12 mat as well which slides perfectly into here and sit um nice and snug on the inches side slightly different on the centimeter side you need to put it um on the inches side and that does actually apply to whichever scoreboard you have whether it's the small one the large one whether it's the pink one or the purple one it works the same the smaller one has a small mat that slides in on the inches side so you've almost got another working area there as well and you can flip between the two we also have the ergonomic scoring tool at the top here and you'll see um, that it's got a wider edge so that you don't hurt your finger when you're scoring and you'll see that as i'm using it um, it doesn't bend it's quite a solid tool and it attaches 
to the board and once you get it home the easiest way to get the score tool out is and i'm going to show you this way is to get your finger underneath the end bit here you'll see it's got like a clip fastening just just hold this end so it doesn't fly off anywhere and that's as simple as it is and you can see there how it's wider here and it's uh, narrower here so you can score that way some people score like that some people score like that it just depends I usually do it that way but you can do it that way and um, you can also use it if you're left-handed this is a good thing unlike scissors which are sometimes difficult you can score with your left hand as well and then it basically just pops back in there and you'll hear it nice and snug nice and tight so you're not going to lose it and it means you can carry it with you and obviously it's hunky dory purple now it was developed specifically to work perfectly with our adorable scorable cardstock um, which as you know was a long time in the making because we needed to find a cardstock that didn't crack or crease or, or kind of break along the, the score line when you score it so they work in conjunction perfectly um, with each other um, it was it took quite a few years in the testing side of things to get it to the point of being the perfect scoreboard. Um, now, as you know, we are based up in Lancashire in Preston, so our office is here and our manufacturing is within our building here where we are right now. And also we have our Inspirations shop just down the road as well, so we are all very closely linked. And most of our products and uh, are de the design in the office here and they are printed here in Lancashire as well so we uh, design everything at Hunky Dory Towers here in Preston then the CAD drawings for this were produced over in Leeds and then the tooling and the polishing was actually done in Burnley um, the injection moulding of the boards themselves was done in Blackburn um, so again you can see it's all Blackburn, Burnley, Leyland, Preston it's quite amazing really uh, in just a close-knit area within each other and we've also won awards um, for this board so we are very proud of it we use it time and again it's one of my most used things I have one under my desk well this is it actually I have one in my trolley I have one in the boot of my car and I have one under my desk at home so I you know I bought a couple of extras so that I have my own as well um, so it's fabulous we've got the small one as well so we've got them on a good deals as well today so emily is going to be popping things up onto um the screen there letting you know um look at that buy any scoreboard and have a handbook for free we have five handbooks as well um we have one sorry that to interrupt again the mic really yeah swap with me okay we are going to swap mics just bear with us one second um we are going to just try this um Okay, let's just sort this out and let's, we're going to do the whole safety thing because we have to, that's the law, so we need to just do the clips and we have to do the pack as well so that we're all nice and safe and we're really good at this now in the office. Oh my goodness, we must be the cleanest people on the planet. We are doing really, really well. Okay, let's try this. Let me know how this one is. We have to go through the shirt here, so it might crackle a minute while I get it in place. Okay. I tell you what, shall I take my necklace off as well, just to make sure? <laughs> that's, that's as far as it goes. What just, a nightmare. It's all right. We need people to be able to hear yeah, what we, we are actually uh, saying and what we're doing. So please let us know how that is now. Um, and then we can get on. So, we've taught you around the scoreboard, we've shown you what great deals we've got. We've also got deals on other stuff as well, so Adorable Scoreable, Ink Me, Miri Card, um, trimmers, cutters, uh, glues, tapes, and we even, I have to show you this because this is really important, um, even though we have the tool that clips into the top and it's nice and safe and you don't really lose it, you can buy separate ones. Um, I have actually, I'm on my second one, mainly because I've done so much scoring, um, I had a little tiny chip in the end of my score tool, so the fact that you can buy this um, separately is, is great, you know, you can even keep one for using like with your Miri or you can keep one for using with your adorable scoreable, whatever, so um, you can get those 
five pound twenty four today. That's all they are. Um, again, and it just you know you just take it out, clip it back in there, and it's perfect, and it fits in all the boards. So um, we're going to tell you as we're going along what we've got. We've got our five hand books. I think that's what we were talking about earlier. So we have an original one. I'm going to show you these because it's important. These are on half price today, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Should be nine ninety nine or four ninety nine. These are packed solid with ideas, tips, techniques, measurements photographs, step-by-step -step instructions, um, all kinds of things. So you can see we have crafting handbook two. Three is our festive one. So we've got crackers, we've got table settings, we've got uh, advent calendars, sleighs, um, you name it. And then we have our um, crafting handbook four, again with more boxes, little castle turrets and things. And then we have our mini makes as well for some of you who like to do smaller projects. Uh, maybe so that's what we have got on offer 4.99 today again amazing bundle um and very very useful so what we're going to do first of all then i will talk you a little bit around um as the scoreboard as we are doing bits and bobs so you pop out your tool first of all decide which side you want to use whether it's centimeters or inches Okay, so I'm I'm a, an old school, so I tend to go, even though we had gone uh, metric by the time I went to school, I still like to use inches because I use that a lot in my knitting as well. So I tend to go for the inches side. Um, but we're going to alternate, so we will be showing you bits and bobs in centimetres and also in um, inches. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to grab a piece of our adorable scorable. I've got this lovely yellow adorable scorable. Um, it's beautiful. And this is our regular adorable scorable, 350 GSM, so it works perfectly with the scoreboard. Now, it's, um, it's amazing because it's got bendy ink, so it doesn't matter which side you um, score it on. You can score it on the top side and it will still give you a lovely score line, or you can turn it over and score it on the other side. I'm going to score. I'm going to show you both. So basically, when you're doing any scoring, always score at the left-hand side. Um, unless you're making a box, that is when you will um, come to score from at the right-hand side or from the right-hand side. The measurements vary slightly. We have an extra little area here, an extra like little indentation. Um, which you will see when you get your board and what it means is that that is the bit that allows us to make the box and the lid that sit snugly together but we'll be going through that as we go along so I'm going to do one score first of all at an inch and so for those of you who have not got your scoreboard or because you're not sure whether to get one or not for those of you who have and maybe using it for the first time along with us today I'm going to score at an inch just to show you how it works so you'll see we've got eight of an inch markings here so we've got quarter of an inch um, half an inch three quarters of an inch and then an inch now basically you take your tool and you slot it into the top here and you just take it down like that okay now it's up to you how many times you score this I think when you get your board and when you get your card it's you're going to try it and you're going to eventually get the feel of it now depending on what card you're using because you might be using thinner card you might be using paper so take that into consideration um, I'm going to be showing you a few different uh, scores as well on Miri and Acetate and the best way to do those. With the Adorable Scorable, you can score on either side. You can score on the top like I've just done there. Okay, so I'm going to show you this. When I fold it in like that and score along, some people like to score along it for, or fold along it with that edge. Some people like to do it with the other edge. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so you can see now, if I hold this up you to the camera, you can see how neat that is. Now, if I turn it over, we'll do it the other way. So we do it at two inches, um, just to give you another idea. And I'm scoring it twice because it's 350 GSM card. So it's very tough construction weight. Okay, so now you can see I scored it on both sides. You can probably see a slight difference there, but it doesn't crack. It doesn't crease. Um, with the adorable scoreable, you can buy it in small packs, you can buy it in huge packs, you can buy plain, you can buy patterns, you can buy matastic or the glossy coating one. It's entirely up to you. Um, so basically, we've got two scores there, and that is just showing you the best way to do it. it you can score on either either side. It's entirely up to you. I very often score 
on the right side of it, uh, to be honest, and, and I'm comfortable doing that. It still gives a beautiful score, um, score line. Okay, so if you are wanting to score, we're going to do a few scores first and then we'll, we'll gradually go on. So if we take some of our Miri card, which again, we've got an offer on the Miri card today, um, on the super size pads, those are the really, really big ones. So they're on at 9.59 today, 15 sheets of A3 size. What we suggest with um, Miricard is that you score on the back of it. So if we take this, place it face down and score, again, we'll go at an inch. And I'm going to do a couple of scores, but I'm not putting too much pressure on. Okay. And then just smooth along like that. Again, it still works beautifully, as you can see. So you can score your mirror as many times you, as you like, but do it on the back. That's the best way. I'm going to show you what happens if you do it on the front. It's, it drags. It drags because it's got this really glossy coating on. And sometimes you can, um, you can catch it or you can um, slip and go into another of the lines. So we prefer you not to do that. So you can see now if I hold that up, which is the nicest line the one on where we scored it on the back. Um, so that's a tip for using your mirror. Now, again, we have also, we have um, acetate. Now, our acetate is 220 micron, so it's construction weight acetate. Again, with the acetate, you can score. Now, with acetate, I like to um, put quite a bit of pressure on, and I like to do it two or three times, usually three times. Okay, now obviously it doesn't matter which side you score it on. And then I like to push it down with my thumbs, first of all, and then go along it. Now, look at the, um, the fold on that. That's actually staying where I've put it. Um, so it's really, really good to, to now make that um, kind of unfold. You really have to put some pressure on, but it shows the construction uh, weight of it and shows that you can score it as well. So. You know, don't think you can't score. With paper and parchment and vellum, you need to be a little bit more gentle. But I wanted to show you adorable scoreable. I'm going to show you a piece of matte as well, so you can see that the matte works too. Um, Miri, adorable scoreable. Let's grab a piece of matte and let's score this. Now, I'm scoring this on the back because this has the uh, matte finish. Um, so, again, I want to just show you... Um, it's still the same quality as the glossy adorable scorable it's not cracking it's not feathering it's not showing any white through and that's fantastic so again I think we've got um, four really good um, panels there showing how you can use it on those different cards and those different mediums okay so what I want to do now, I want to show you some um, little um, panels that I've done and how to do these because a lot of you don't have diagonal machines or you don't have um, you don't have embossing folders. You might not want them. They might not be something you want or they might not be in your budget. So you can make some patterned backgrounds using the scoreboard. So what I've done here, I've taken a 10 by 10 inch square and I'm going to show you how to do a couple of these just to give you an idea. Um, We've got a lined one, which you can see here. If I tilt it, you can see the lines. Then I've done the lines going diagonally, uh, not diagonally, sorry, vertically as well. So we have like a, a grid effect. Then I've done them on the diagonal by scoring um, down from the points. So you can see how we get that effect. And then again, we've done like the grid effect on the diagonal too. So you've got still got that checkered effect. Then using, and this is on the centimetre side of the board, which I'll show you in a second. Then we have got the um, little, uh, almost like a tartan effect. And then again, we've added an extra line and we've gone with the tartan effect on the diagonal. So you can see we have then created what looks like an embossed panel, but without the embossing folder. Then what I've done, done two identical um, grids almost just by scoring at um centimeter points now i've scored on the top side on this one so that then you get the grooves going in and when you sand it you get um like a debossed effect and then this one i've scored on the back and then we've sanded over the top of this so the embossed lines from the back kind of stand proud and that gives you that panel 
Um, so again, it's not just for scoring and making cards, it's for actually doing patterns, um, creating your own backgrounds. So again, we've got two or three of those. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to chop, because I wanted to do um, live a little experiment here. If I take um, a piece of a rainbow mirror, I want to try that same effect. So this will work no matter, we're already 12 centimetres there. So this will work no matter um, what size you do and what you use it on, you can still create that grid effect. So I'm going to turn my board over to the centimetre side. I'm going to turn my mirror that way. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to score centimetre all the way down the centimetre lines. Okay, so let's just do this. And this is a good way of getting to grips with your scoreboard. If you are new to using um, our scoreboard, it's a really good um, way of, of getting used to the feel of it, how much you need to score, how much pressure you need to put on. Um, it's, it's a really good way of, um, you know, getting used to it. Okay, so now we turn this over, you can see the effect that's created. Um, and that is pretty incredible. So now you've got, if you're making cards or little girls, mermaid cards or anything, you can. Look at the colours in that. And it, I think it's exaggerated now by the fact that we've um, put those lines in. Let's just grab the plain one. The plain one almost looks quite boring now, doesn't it? Even though it's not, it's very magical. But look at the difference there in when we tilt them, in the way the colour is like um, exaggerated in this. It's quite, quite amazing. Now then, we talked about doing it on the diagonal. So I'm going to add diagonal lines to this as well and make it a little bit more crazy. So here we've got a little tip as well. If you want to um, get the diagonal effect, then you need to um, place your corner on any of the grooves. It can be, you know, 10, it can be 12, it can be 17. It depends whether you're left-handed or right-handed. The tip here is to put your um, scoring tool, I've got it in groove 15 here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is keep that in 15 groove there. That's the easiest way to explain it. Then I'm going to put my point of the card up into 15 and then make sure that the point the bottom point of the card is also in 15. Okay, so what we're going to do then is hold it tight there and we're going to score at centimetres again, all the way along. Now, some of you will get to this point and go, right, I want to go that way, but as I get that way, I can't hold the card quite secure because I need to be scoring, need to put pressure on. Turn it round. So again, you've taken this card off now, so remember to put your tool back in at 15 and... Put that in like that. Now we've already done the score down the middle, so again, we're going to come out at centimetre markings all the way along like that until we get to the end there. Now when we turn that over, now look at that, it's, it's crazy, but look how amazing it is. It's fabulous and you can now use that that way, but we're not finished there because I want to make this even more busy. So what I want to do is do the diagonal lines the other way. So what I do now, again, put it in 15, line up the top, line up the bottom. And again, do exactly what we've just done. Go along at the inch, uh, sorry, the centimetre markings. And then again, turn it round. Scoring tool in the 15 line. We don't need to go down the 15 because we've already done that. We don't want to um, make that exaggerated, uh, you know, to stand out more than the other lines. So we only know, need to go over it once. And then we go like that. And now we've got a really crazy uh, pattern. Look how amazing that is. Isn't that just incredible? Doesn't it? It's amazing. And each time you do um, another grid line on there, it kind of makes the it, it almost looks like mosaic so the mirror now looks like it like it's tiled um it's really really um something quite spectacular i just love that and that would be great on meme card you know on a um, princess card you know even on something someone is coming of age so that's just a couple of ways of doing the backgrounds so now what i want to do is i want to take a piece of cardstock and i'm going to show you how to do um, a simple little 
um, kind of folding card which will open this way and it will stand up so you can stand it up like that it will stand up and it will shut you can actually attach ribbon on it as well here so if you want to tie a ribbon in the middle so it keeps shut you can do but look how funky that is with the actual stripes because it does marry up and it doesn't matter which way you turn it around it's it's kind of works the same and it does stand up so i'm not sure if there's an actual name for this but i want to just show you um how to fix this so um, let's let's get this together. So let me take. I'm going to get um, one of our fabulous pieces of cardstock from the um, abstract ombre. So this is one of the um, cardstocks that we brought to you recently on Create Craft, and then here at Honky Dory TV. Um, it's beautiful cardstock. It's adorable, scorable, and it's got. Um, it's our glossy coated one, but look at that. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing with all those. It's like it's been inked with all those backgrounds. Right, so what we're going to do, because of the um, awkward measurement of a uh, four card stock, I need to trim this down a little bit. So you can see here with the way I've done this, I've actually scored this at nine centimetres. So I've cut my um, card stock down to nine centimetres. Okay, so I'm going to pop that over there because we don't need that. And then I need to just use the extension arm on the trimmer. And I think we've got the trimmer on offer as well today. So I'm going to cut this to 27. Okay, so let's just do that. So we can move the trimmer out of the way. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to score it at 9. So I've turned it over because I want to do the... the um, card coming in and I'll, sh I'll show you in a second what, once I've explained what I'm doing. So score at 9 and then score at 18. Okay, and we're going to fold it in that way. I'm going to look a bit off there. Let me just straighten that up a little bit. Okay, and then the same with that. Okay, now then, so we have this section like this. Okay, now what you can do as well, I'm going to turn it that way now and give it another little score and turn it that way and give it another little score. Okay, so what we need to do now, like we've just shown, we need to score on the diagonal. So I'm going to, again, because I'm on the centimetre side, put my um, tool in the 15. Now you might find this easier to score on the other side here. So what we're going to do, we're going to score from this point here down to this point here. Okay, so you're going to go to the middle of the, the square panel. Okay, so let's get our tool down in 15 there and we line up the sections like that and then we score, okay? So then when we now fold this like that, when we turn it over, we don't have any white showing, um, we have the colours. So again, we're going to do the same now on this side. So this time, before you do it, look at it because this panel here needs to fold the opposite way to this one. Okay, so if you close it like that, it gives you an idea. You know that you need to score from there to there. So again, let's get the tool in 15 and down to there like that. Okay, score like that. And then we will turn it over and we will just smooth that down like that. Okay, and then we have our folded panels like this so you can see it stands up perfectly it's really quite um it's almost a little bit crazy so if you were making something uh, that's a bit more um like with stars planets things like that stick some acetate on the back and get some um things that boing off the top you can do whatever you want to but you can see it folds flat so it will go in um an envelope i think it will actually go in a four by four envelope yes it will so it will fold flat now i would let me show you on this one. Connect these. I would either tape them down or glue them down or put a pad in the middle. It depends what you're doing with your card. But you can see then how that is really, really firm. You've got no white showing um, and it will stand up. But you can leave these open to create that really kind of wacky effect. Um, so that's just a couple of simple folds um, with um, just a strip of A4 cardstock. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do the... Um, this fold which is this is a um, another kind of crazy little fold 
And it's and though you think looking at it is a bit difficult, it's not. It's quite simple. So what we're going to do here, this is um, kind of I think it's named as a tuxedo car because it actually looks like the collar on tuxedo. Um, but again, what we're going to do is we are going to fold this. This is made from an A4 sheet with just a little bit of cutting. You can see that would fit into an A5 envelope that way because it falls flat or it would go into an A5 envelope that way because it falls flat. Um, so it's it's really quite a nifty little fold, but you could put flowers in here. You could, um, you know, put plants in here. Bit like, let me show you this one. Bit like this one. Again, you can make really, really simple things. All these are done on the scoreboard. Really, really simple. And we're hoping that we can do some step-by-steps with measurements to show you um, once we've done the, the Facebook Live and the Hunky Door TV, how you can uh, then recreate this if you're not doing it with us. Have we got any crafters, Emily, that are crafting along with us at this moment? Or are people just watching? A lot of people are just loving your ideas. I say. I've had a lot of thank yous, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Thank oh. you with the, um, the rainbow mirrors. Oh, I'm. Oh, really? I'm yeah. pleased. I'm pleased about that. I'm very pleased. Thank you for for joining in with us, um, everyone. So I'm going to grab now some of my. Um, let's go with. Let's change it round a bit. This one. So, what we're going to do now? I'm going to show you how to um, do the um, the tuxedo fold. Now for this one. What you need to do, place your cardstock onto the board. So I'm going to do this on the centimetre side. And then once we've done this, as I move on to the, the project, we're going to actually do like a handbag, um, which we actually posted one on my Hunky Dory Facebook page last week that was made from Woodland Wildlife. Um, so I'm going to, I've kind of um, elaborated on that a bit. And so we wanted to show you. Uh, we've only got like an hour or just over an hour so it's you know i could sit here for a fortnight now without going to sleep um and do things on this scoreboard so we hope that we'll be able to do more technique um well i hope anyway um because i particularly love double scoreboard and the scoreboard that we can do more over the weeks and the months um you know getting the best out of your cardstock and uh, the scoreboard as well. So I'm hoping we can kind of extend it and, and do more with it. But for now, we want to show you just with the time we've got a few little different tips and tricks and different ways of using it. So I've taken some of the, um, this is our from rose. It is from the pat pat. And this is the, um, this is the black and the rose, rose gold, isn't it? Um, it's beautiful because we've got lots of swirls, we've got geometrics in here, so you can really make things quite kind of crazy and very hip. I mean, look at that background, it's amazing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna give you the measurements for this um, as we do this. So if you're crafting along with us, get the, um, get your um, scoreboard out, get a piece of card. Now I will point out as well, which is really important, um, we have got, and I want to show you because this is one of my favourite uh, products as well, along with the Durable Scorable, our Super Size Essential Card Block. Um, this is on offer today, um, 11 99 instead of 14 99 It is amazing. Um, it's got 50 sheets in. It's Look at the size of it, A3. We were just saying, if we open the cover and stand it up next to me, it's almost as tall as me, this. Um, but you have lots and lots of ideas on the front here. A lot of these are in the handbooks as well. And obviously, I would love to sit and show you how to do all these, but... Um, we we haven't we can't just be live all day long, um, so but that's an idea, isn't it, yeah, <laughs> Emily? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Doing an all day show, okay. So, yeah, definitely. Oh, we've got a squeaking. Oh, it's the aircon. Okay, it's the aircon. Okay, so this is on offer now. When we put our handbooks together, we um, use this to make our kind of prototypes. All our card blanks are made with this as well. So, the great thing about this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take a page out of here because this has taken me on to something else, which I knew this would happen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tear a sheet out of here. In fact, I'm going to move along a little bit so I don't um, catch the cover there. And I'm going to tear a sheet out of here. And you know what? This is perfect for um, using uh, to make an 8x8 card. And I'm going to do that before I actually go on to this. Okay, so what you're going to do, flip the board over to the inches side. Okay, so if you want to do an eight inch card, this is the way I do it. I place my A3 card landscape on the board on the inch side and I score down at eight 
inches. Okay. Then I fold it along the score line. I press along the, the fold there so it's lovely. Okay. And then I take my trimmer. And let's get the extension arm on. This is actually easier than cutting, um, cutting it down to size and then it not being quite right. So if I pop it on there, bring my trimmer blade down and then take it up to the eight inch point on there. Again, cut. Again, we'll just give it another little cut down there. Yeah, there we go. And there we have eight by eight card blank. Perfect. How easy is that? And you can do that with any card size that you want. 8x8 tends to be the biggest that we do um, these days. So um, there's your 8x8 card. And then you've got this one left. Um, so if you'd cut from your A3 card a 16x8 piece, you'd have, you know, you'd have ended up with a few scraps. But you've got this left now. So you've got a little card. It's, it's a bit like, in fact, it's probably, it's just, it's not quite DL size. But again, you can use it landscape like that with your fold down the side, or you can use it that way. But perfect. So you've got two cards out of the one sheet. That's with the help of the scoreboard and the paper trimmer and the big block. So I think that's, that's fabulous. You might be someone that just makes card blanks and sells them. Um, and you know, this is the perfect thing. Board. Uh, super size card and the trimmer and you're away so think about that think about that you may want to sell card blanks on your stalls okay so we're now going to go back to a tuxedo card so i have placed my card stock onto the we need to go on centimeters don't we because we were just on inches for that uh, so i'm going to turn my card over okay what i'm going to do um, because this is 29 it's about 29 and three quarters what i'm going to do is score at seven 14, 21, 28, and then the little panel down this, the side will create the tab that we then make the card uh, from when we assemble it. Okay, so we're going to score at 7, all the way down, 14, 21, and 28. Okay, so now you can see we have got our four symmetrical panels and then our little bit on the end. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take the, I'm just going to grab my pencil and I want to do a mark at seven here and then 14. Now it's up to you whether you do the marks along the side here um, or whether you do them along the top by turning your card around. It'll be the same either way. So I'm going to do my card we can do it that way just to show you that it does work so we've got points marked at 7 and 14 this allows us then to cut in the right place and fold in the right place so we turn it back so what we're going to do now is we are going to put some score lines in so that we know where to cut and where to fold now I know you can't see very well here would it help let I tell you what let's draw some pencil lines on here now you know what if you've got a, a steady hand and a sharp pencil you can actually draw in that groove now I'm going to do it with my ruler just so that I know um, I mean we've got such bright lights in here it might not be uh, perfect but you could just do a really faint line um, a dotted line whatever you want to let's line it back up on there and get you can also put your ruler right on there like that and then like that so this might just show it up a little bit better for you um just so that you can see where we are going with it okay 14 and then seven so we're just coming backwards along here and these are all tips and things that come to you when you're actually explaining something to people like i'm doing now i didn't think about the pencil lines before but again as i'm doing it it might make it easier for you so you can see now we've got our four panels and then our end panel that's a little bit probably easier for you to see Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to do, if I bring this card back in here, you can see, um, and if I was you and you were doing this, I would make this up from Ink Me Cardstock as a template. And that, that way then you've got the template, you can put your measurements on, and then you can actually come to keep your templates in a folder or a file and you've always got them to refer back to. So you can see now, we are gonna go from 
um, the 14, which is the center line, we're going to create like an angle. So we're going to fold, we're going to score to here, and then you can either score or you can do a line down to the next point so that we know how to fold it back because what we're going to do is fold these two panels back. Okay, so let's do this first. Let's do the line. Now you can do, again, you can score here or you can actually do a pencil line. It's entirely up to you. Or if like me, you cut freehand. I, I'm comfortable totally cutting freehand down to there. But we're going to do it on the scoreboard so we're just creating a nice outline now then this is where it might look like it gets a bit complicated but it doesn't because we have to score on the diagonal again so what you can do is if I take my ruler because I want to do a little notch here okay so let's do a little notch we've already got pencil mark at seven so let's do a little notch here so basically what we're going to do is we're going to mark those um, lines where those seven centimetre points meet. Okay. Because what we want to do is we want to cut down here. Okay. And you can also cut this panel off as well. If it makes it easy for you, I'm trying to give you the best ways of doing it because everybody sees things differently. So this is going to come to here. So if we cut this section out first, then you will be able to see where we're going with it. So I'm going to cut because I'm confident at cutting on, on an angle like this and going down to that point. If you're not comfortable, draw a pencil line and cut along it. Don't look at where you've cut from, look at where you're cutting to. So you can see now how I've cut to that point. If I concentrated on this bit, I would go that way and I would go that way. Look at where you're cutting to, not where you are cutting from. So again, that's another little tip. And you will find it does actually work. It's like driving. If you are driving, you look at where you, you're driving to, not where you're coming from. That way you don't crash into anything. So, so you, now you can see how we've got our triangle section at the top. Okay, so let's make this easy. Let's now cut this other piece off here. So we're going to chop down there and then we're going to chop down here. Now don't throw those bits away, you will probably be able to use them later depending on which way around you use your card. So we're going to pop those, those to there. Okay, so if we turn it back round, now does it start to make more, more sense? So now what we need to do is we need to continue that score line down to the seven centimeter point that we made here earlier okay so this this is probably more of um we've gone from kind of basic scoring here to something a little bit more technical but again this is where it will actually help so we need to make sure 15 line there okay and then we can score to here so we will line that up there now, another little tip for you here, you might prefer to do it this other way. So you might want to do the score lines from here. So you might want to do it lined up that way. So we've got a seven centimetre mark here and a seven centimetre mark here. Right, so if we move this up to the left side of the board again, we can now just score down there and stop. Okay, and then we can do the same again here along the seven centimetre points that we've marked with a pencil, like that, okay? So now we have got this section here, okay? So this bit now can be cut off. Now you can cut that with your scissors or you can cut it with your um, trimmer or your guillotine, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna do it with my scissors because then we're gonna put that diagonal score line in, okay? Now, if you are thinking, oh my goodness, this bit that I'm cutting here looks narrower than the, than the other bit I've just cut, that's because you've got your extra piece here for your tab where your score line is, so, so it's absolutely fine. Okay, so now we need to get rid of that piece. So we're going to cut, again, along that other se seven centimetre mark that we've done there, and we're going to cut this off. Now, when we give you templates in our magazine or in our scoreboards, we show you... Let me grab this piece. So we show you a template like this. So we actually draw the template for you. 
and then these bits that you need to cut away are done in a darker shaded area so this bit will be white with with gray or black lines on and this bit will be done in gray um, and this is what we call a net or a template to give you an idea as to which bits you need to cut off so that you can make your correct shape so that kind of explains what the template is and, and how you know where to cut things off. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to score now. We need to do our di diagonal lines. So again, I'm going to get my uh, tool. I'm going to put it in 17 here, right? And then I'm going to line up. Now, let's turn this over a little bit like that because that's already scored. So I'll get back in 17 there. I should have done that first. And we're going to line up the point here with the point here and we're going to score down there okay and then we're going to do the same here so again let's line it up in number 17 make sure we get that there and that there like that so that then so now we've got all of the score lines in so now what we want to do is I'm going to turn it over. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can do it so that you have this bit showing, like this. So you can have you can have it like that. Or you can do it the other way, so your pattern bit is on the inside. So let's turn it round. Let's do this. And then we do this. Is this making sense? Is this, I don't know anyone to be, can you? Oh, and you're not really a crafter as such, are you, Emily? Um, she doesn't craft at all. Don't worry, she will do. She will do before she, uh, before long. Um, we might end up trading places. She might become um, a crafter and I might become a producer. However, I doubt that because I have trouble with email. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so that will probably never happen. Not in my lifetime anyway. So now you can see how we have created this. Okay, does, has that made sense so far? And then, obviously, now if you don't want to do a score line down the middle and you want that back panel to be flat, you can do that and just have these bits folded because that will then still be a card when you open it up. I mean, you can cut these ends off if you like and have it like that. So you're going to have all kinds of variations. So let's um, do the next bit. So I'm going to fold my along my score line here so that we then create our kind of boxy card effect. Okay, now before I said keep those triangles. Now, if you keep the triangles, this is because you can either put them underneath so you've got no white showing when you actually um, finish your card, or if you're not using double sided card and you want to actually do your card that way, then you can, and then you can put these back on here. So these are just all little tips that will help you um, when deciding which way around you want your card. Um, you might be wanting to just do a big flower here um, and keep the white. So that's, um, that's the idea. Um, but again, it works both ways. So we are now going to decorate these panels here. So take one of the contrasting um, cards that we've got um, from that same um, black and rose gold. Now then, you're probably thinking, well, right, how do I do that? Well, if you remember, this measures seven centimetres here. So we need two seven centimetre strips. So let's cut two seven um, centimetre strips. Okay, so we're gonna go one, two. Okay, so we've got two strips. Now then, look at your card again. This now measures we know that this measures seven to here. We know that this measures another seven and that measures, measures another seven. So we're going to cut it to 14 by seven. So that piece there is 14 by seven. So if we trim this piece down to 14 and this piece down to 14, then we have two pieces that will fit onto here. Okay, so let me show you. There we go. But now we need to do the angle. So again, we can cut a panel. If we do a mark, and I'm gonna use my um, actual paper trimmer here, just to put a mark in there. So I know that I need to cut a panel off like that. Okay. 
so let's just make sure that's lined up in the groove with the pencil mark okay and we now have a panel that should fit here perfect yep and then we do the same with our other one so this one needs to have the mark this end here and we're going to cut from the corner there so let me grab my pencil again and I'm going to do a mark here okay at seven I'm going to turn that round because I want to do it on the back so we mark it at seven and you can do it on both sides just so that you are aware remember as um, Emily said um, before the start of the show and the same applies when you're um, knitting or when you're sewing well um, measure twice and then cut once because um, the same, I do that when I'm casting on with my wool. I have to do it in a certain way to make sure I've got um, certain lengths. If I'm doing like intarsia and things like that, I have to make sure that I've got the right lengths cut. So measure it twice and then cut it once. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we need to cut from this corner here down to our seven centimetre point there to create our panel for this side. Okay, so now we can pop these onto here so let's pop. Is this you had in the graphic book? no it's not actually this is something I just came across and I thought I really like that it's a little bit different um, so let's um, let's try doing that I think it's something a bit different um, and that's a good thing we di I didn't want to repeat everything that is on, in the handbooks because I know a lot of you've got the handbooks already and a lot of you do um, May, may buy them today as well while they're on offer at 4 99 I mean, that's an incredible price. Um, they are really, really um, great handbooks, perfect for if you've got a scoreboard. Um, you know, and if you want to progress with your scoreboard, lots of people don't necessarily want to just make cards. They like to um, make boxes and, you know, um, I'm going to trim that little bit off there. I've got an extra little bit, which might be because we've got a... A folded panel there but now you can see how this fits here and then we will take this one on um, so it's quite um, nice once it's together and it stands up so let's do this and take the backing off here and then the back and off here. Are, are there any questions at all, Emily? Are, are people just relaxing with a coffee and uh, yeah, a lot of people are just watching? Just have got a few people crafting a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Are there some people actually making the card as well? Yeah, there might be a bit of practice on this one. A couple of people are just getting started with the card. Okay. But we can we can help again. You can um, you can go back over this uh, video, can't they, Emily? And they can pause yeah, it. Yeah, so you can pause it. If you're stuck with anything, um, you can just let me know because I'm not always the best person at explaining um, because sometimes I use too many words rather than less. Um, but you can see how that works. Um, maybe there's a way of me actually doing a template for this as well um, so that you know we can kind of make it a little bit easy for you please let us know if you're struggling especially afterwards as well because we're trying I'll try and help as best I can I was going to do some step by steps as well um, if we if I get chance today maybe not today um, maybe tomorrow so we can at least put those on but you can see now how that works but can you imagine putting that it doesn't have to be a card it doesn't have to be um, a box you could put that around a plant you might be giving someone a cup like a mug you could you could do that you could put it around a mug you know you might want to give someone um, a tie or, or a scarf or something like that and these are really good ways of doing them you can actually stick this down if you want to with some brads or some buttons uh, and again it will fold flat so if you want to put it in an envelope you can get it in an A5 envelope because obviously we've used A4 cardstock um, so I think what we'll do, I'm going to show them both together so you can see the differences there. There's, there's not really any difference apart from the, um, the, the cardstock that I've used. And this is all from that lovely um, black and rose gold um, card. I really like the shape of this. I can see so many ways of using it. And, then, and as I'm sat here now, I've done it, I'm thinking, why not make more of them? 
you could put three together, couldn't you? That's that's two together. You could put three together. You could put like cactus plants in. Um, and this is where once you start messing around with and playing around with your scoreboard and your cardstock, you get your own unique ideas and you say, oh, I could use that for that. Or I could do, you know, you could hang it up. You could hang it up. You could put a base on it. You could do all kinds of things with it. Fill it with paper flowers. Use it as a pen pot, stick it on a base, put your pens in it, your, your alcohol markers, things like that. So, it, and that's the good thing about having this scoreboard because that allows you the versatility to be able to make lots and lots of other things. Now, obviously, we have just come. This could be done with a, an A3 sheet type of question. Oh, most definitely. As long, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's basically doing your measurements. Um, the measurements of A3 is actually. Um, 42 centimetres, I think, by 20, about 29 and 3 quarters. So again, you might, uh, you don't probably won't have to trim a bit off, but you could do it with the super size. I'm absolutely convinced. I will probably have to try it now. Not this minute, but I'll probably have to try it and see. Right, so what I want to do now is I want to, because I'm, I'm aware of the time, I want to actually make, I know I wanted to do this, this card because it's something different, it's not in the handbooks um, and again it can be used for something else. I wanted to just um, actually, let me just pop those up there out of the, the way for a second. Um, I want to show you, because we had a few people comment um, on one of my posts that we put on the my Hunky Dory page, um, the little um, bag here. Now this is done with Adorable Scorable. Um, you can do it with Mary if you want to, you can do it with Ink Me, you might want to um, do it from Ink Me and then actually stamp it. You're probably thinking it looks quite difficult, it's not difficult at all. I'm going to show you how to do it now um, and we will do measurements for this and step by steps as I say, like we've done with the, um, with the other card. But I wanted to just show you how to do this, it's not as difficult as you would imagine. So um, I'm just going to grab some of my cardstock. Now we're going to do this on the inches side. I've done this in our beautiful matte-tastic denim um, and it's actually got like a, um, a little V in the bottom there. Rather than doing it flat, I felt that that gave it um, just a bit more rigidity when we stand it up on the desk. Our lovely Ashley out there was, was trying to push it over. Now I think if it had a totally flat base it would have fallen over but it We've kept it um, with the indentation at the bottom. Um, this is all done in separate pieces, so it's it's easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I think, shall we use, um, what have we not mentioned? We've done the abstract ombre, we've done the, um, we've done the rainbow card that's crazy. Let's do some of the, um, Let's go with some of this. This is fabulous. This is going to make a really nice summer handbag. Let's go with some of our, um, our watercolour. This is our watercolour wash, isn't it? This is beautiful. This is matte-tastic. So we're going to be doing quite a bit scoring, um, but I want to, to just show you how it does work. So let's use, first of all, I'm going to do yellow. I've got yellow handbag at home. In fact, I've got three, I think, and I haven't used any of them this summer. Mainly because I've not been out, because, you know, we've not been able to go, to go out, have we, really? So, um, so my handbags are just sat there in the cupboards waiting. Um, right, so what I want to do here, I want to trim this um, a little bit so I can do um, the measurements a bit easier. Um, so, um, in fact, I don't actually need to. I'm going to give you a little, uh, little tip here. If you, a lot of you who make... Um, Card blanks, like A5 card blanks, always ask us, where on earth do we score um, to make an A4 card into an A5 card blank? Right, because of the awkwardness of um, and the unusual measurement of A4 card, we have said that if you score at five and seven eighths, right, so if you're rubbish at maths like me, or you think where on earth is, is five and seven eighths, obviously our inch increments here are split into eight notches. So you know that five and seven eighths, it's going to be the seventh notch. So it's going to be the last the last notch before you get to your next main number. So five and seven eighths, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there it is. So score down the middle 
like that. Okay, now if I fold that in half now, you will find you have got a tiny, tiny, I'm going to lift it up to the camera so you can see it. You're going to have probably about, well, less than an eighth of an inch um, overhang here. Now on a card blank, you would use that as your front panel. We have that overhang, which a lot of people call the leading edge, because that means then it's easy for you to undo your card, open your card because you've got a little lip to do that. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. Now, because I'm making a bag, I want it to be even, so I want to trim that little piece off. So we just cut that off and you can either do it with your guillotine or your paper trimmer, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to do it with my paper trimmer and trim that little piece off. It's just, you know, it's, it's that much, but that will make the difference when I make my bag stand up. Okay, so now what I want to do is turn it the other way because this fold needs to be that way. If I show you in the bottom of the bag here, it needs to be that way. So if I grab it like that, you'll be able to, to figure that out. And then the next two folds that we do will be these here, which will go the other way. So we're going to turn that back down there. Now I'm going to line this up to six inches. So it's up to you now how deep you want the um, section on the bag here. I've done it to an inch. So I've lined it up at six, score at seven, score at five. Okay, or five and seven, it's entirely up to you. And then we're going to fold this one in, and we're going to fold this one in, and that has now created our fold. So now if we push the bottom bit in there, like that, then we know that that is going to stand up nice and firm like that when we get the um, extra bits in. Okay, so what we've got to do now, we need to make the angled edges here. So the easiest way for me to do this is to decide how steep I want my angle to be. So you can either do this, you can either go, okay, I'm going to mark it in at an inch. So if we put it on the board here, mark it in at an inch there, and then we can cut that off. Now you can mark the inch marks on all four edges or another little tip here. Let's cut that piece off. Lots of people love measuring. Lots of people absolutely detest measuring and don't measure anything. They just, they just, you know, make it. So if we cut that off there, okay, so you've got that now. That piece now, flip it over, put it to there, and you can now use that as a guide as well. So you can put a little mark there and you can go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm not measuring it. I'm just going to cut it. And you're going down to this first score line. Okay, so let's do that. And there we go. And then you can do it again on this side. Okay, so, and that's another little, a little tip for all you people that don't want to measure or can't figure it out or are in a hurry and go, I can't, there's not time to measure it. I need to just cut it and fold it and, and go. Okay, like that. And then again, we'll take the original one, but they're all going to be the same size anyway, so, it, so it's fine. And then do that. Okay, so again, little pencil mark. And I've done it before, I've cheated. I've not even done a pencil mark. I've just held that on and cut down the side of it. So again, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Okay. Right, so. Now we have our angled bag. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to cut these pieces here off at an angle as well. So the easiest way to do that is to just fold your, just grab my big scissors for this because I'm cutting through a couple of, uh, of double pieces here like that, snip that off and then do this one this way. I'm going to turn it around and do it that way so it's easy, um, like that. Okay, so then we have got our angled panel. Now I know you're thinking, well you're probably thinking, how am I going to do the sides? Am I going to cut the sides and, and get them all fitted in here? Okay, so this is what we do. We cut from the, I'm going to grab um, the rest of my yellow. Where did I put my big pile of card? Oh, it's right in front of me here. That's where I put it. <laughs> right, so we've, um, I've got a piece here that I had already used. So I want to cut 
two strips um, to fit in here. Now these now measure here, two, this now measures two inches because we scored it at an inch and an inch there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two pieces that measure, we've got the two inches, then we have to, ha I have to add, should I say, an extra piece on that will form the tab that will hold the sides together. So I'm going to allow a half inch, so that's one inch, two inch, half an inch, and then another half inch, that's three. So we need two strips that measure three inches. So let's cut two pieces that measure just three inches, like that, and another three inches. Okay, like that. Right, so now we go back to the scoreboard. Okay, because what I want to do now is, so I'm looking at this, we've got this measures two inches when you lay it flat. So what we want to do is we want to put this onto the scoreboard like that. Right, so you remember now we've added an extra half inch on each side of the two inches. So we're going to score half an inch there and half an inch here. Okay, and then we will fold this in and fold this in like that. Okay, so this then creates the side of our box and this is what, of our bag should I say, and this is what goes into here. Okay, so we end up with the panel in there like that. So we're going to do the same with the other piece and then I'll show you how we put it together and how we trim it. Okay, so we do the score lines down there. We are also, today, while we are doing this, we are still going to add a product to our rollover box, courtesy of the lovely Emily. And we're actually going to pop this into the rollover box. Um, the um, low tack tape, you get five rolls in here going through from um, a really thin tape to a really thick tape. This is low tack tape, so you use it with your dies, but you can use it as well um, for um, creating techniques and backgrounds with your stamps and inks. So there's lots of different ways of using it. So now I'm going to grab my red tape. When we do construction, we use our red tape a lot of the time. Now our red tape is, I think we've also got an offer on that today, haven't we, Emily? Yeah. We have um, an offer on that. Now then, here I'm not going to use all my red tape because I, I want to trim a bit off. As long as I have gone past that, um, let me move this up and explain it better. I need it to be the same length as this. So I've gone a little bit further just to allow for any uh, kind of discrepancies. So we're going to put red tape all the way up here um, so that we know that will stick in the bag. And then the same on the other side. Is there anyone actually trying to make the bag, um, Emily, or are people not saying? Oh, are they? Well, I hope it's making sense and it's not um, stressing anybody out. I'm aware that I've gone over my time slot, as I do, because I talk a lot. Dan will probably like, oh, Sheila, be quiet. It's worth it. This is going to be awesome. Well, it's going to be a cute little bag. So now... Oh my goodness, this will be amazing. I would love to see that. You must post pictures of it. Um, only if you want to, of course, and you're happy to. I know some people go, oh my goodness, look what I've done. But you know what, this is, um, there was no template for this. I just sat and did this with a piece of the cardstock from our Woodland Wildlife Kit. Um, and I used the one that had a foiled um, corner on. So the foiled corners, and that was that was actually the inspiration to do it because um, you know when you get like an old leather uh, a bag, an old leather bag that's got like metal panels on with rivets and stuff. So you know it's a proper old tough leather bag that's you know seen many years of life. It was the corners on there of the foiling that made me think of like almost an old style bag or satchel and that's what inspired me to make the bag. So you know it can be something as simple as a bit of foiling on a card that brings up a template idea. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take a piece of the tape off. Right, so I'm not going to take the whole bit off yet. And I've already cut a tiny little angled bit here 
um, I've done that while I was chatting. So we've got a tiny little triangle piece just so that it sits nice and flush with this. Okay, so a little tip again, fold this and then line it up with your um, edge of your bag here, making sure that the, um, the fold lines up with the edge like that so it's nice and neat and that you've got your panel here above your fold just by a fraction. Okay, and then once you're happy with that, you can then take that off. Okay, so now we've got our side flush here. So what I'm going to do, take my scissors and I'm going to cut that just to match up to the score line. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same on the other end. Right, so don't do that bit. Don't think, oh, I need to put the side on because then you will find it trickier to put this in. If you do it flat, so we do it like a mirror, um, then we are now going to connect this side to this. Okay, so again, fold it and we do exactly the same. You might want to turn it round, depends whether you're left-handed, right-handed, which way you like to do things is fine. And a little tip, even if you're using the red tape, it does actually, um, if you don't press it down and you put your um, box bit in the wrong area, you can actually pull it off there as long as you've not pressed it down too hard. Okay, so we've done that exactly the same and now we can snip this here. Okay, like that. Okay, so now we're leaving this bit on here. We don't need, um, let's, let's make it a little bit easier. I don't need this bit here. So that is gonna go off there and that is gonna go off there because we don't need this. This is gonna be trimmed as well. Okay, so now we can do the other side here. So again, mirroring what we've just done, take off the backing. Um, we have a light in here that's on a sensor and it keeps frightening me to death when it goes, it goes off. If we don't move for a while, then it goes off and it's like, oh my goodness, the light's gone off, what's going on? Panic, panic. So now we've got something to kind of rest it on here now. Um, so we can push this down, again, press it in. So you can see how it starts to come together. Take your scissors, trim off that little bit there. Okay, and then we put our final um, side on. Now we were talking about this before, I was talking to Ashley when she first came in this morning, we were saying, why don't you use this for putting things in like, um, you could put like um, crafting stuff in here. So you could put your pens in. You could make some cards and some envelopes and put those in and it would be like a gift set. Um, you could put even toiletries in like a face pack. You can put sweets in it. You can put all kinds of things in something like this. And this is why it's quite um, nice to, to have the option to, to make something like this. Right, so now we've got our little panels here. We don't need these. So we want to cut straight across. So you can either lay it down and do it with your knife. But what I've done, what I thought was easier, was to take my scissors, cut this here, Cut this here and then cut that panel off there because then you can get your scissors flush like that. Okay, and then the same with this. Cut this bit off, cut this bit off and then go along here with your scissors again. So they go nice and flush with that and you get nice straight edges. And then if you just need to kind of snip a little bit extra off there where you cut the original bits, that's, that's fine. So now we have got our box section here. Now you can push the little fold back inside a little bit so that it sits nice and flush and you can see how firm that is now. I mean you could even put chocolate in and biscuits, um, you know it's really quite quite cute. You might be doing children's parties uh, and you might want to give them goodie bags, princess bags, you know you can do stuff like this, you could give them one of these already made and then they just decorate it at the party. So lots and lots of different options. Okay, so now we've got that, what we need to do now is we need to do a handle. So what I wanted to do for the handle, um, because with this one, if I bring this one back in, I filled it full of um, tissue paper. If you want to um, cover the inside so you've not got the white showing, again, it's fine, you can do that. However, if you've got some of our fabulous double-sided adorable scoreable, you might have some of the uh, polka dots and the stripes left, you could use that, it would be amazing. Okay, 
What we're going to do though, we're going to do a, like a handle, you can see, that's just two strips um, back to back, just to make it again nice and sturdy. And it feels really nice to hold actually as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, I think we'll do, let's do a different coloured handle. Let's go with, ooh, let's do that. Let's grab that nice um, orange, I think. So we're going to do, um, in fact, no, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go pink. I'm going to go pink. Okay. So now, remember, the, um, the width of the box at the bottom and the top here is two inches. Um, if you're not sure or you think, oh, it's not quite straight, what was it? You can line it up. This is what I do a lot of the time. Line it up at the top of your scoreboard here. And you'll see it's two inches. Um, you know, it's really useful to do it that way. You'll see it's two inches. Um, and again, that's another useful thing about the scoreboard. You don't have to get your ruler out. You've got your board there. So what we're going to do, take our paper trimmer, put two pieces of pink cardstock. Right, so we're going to go with inches on the uh, trimmer. And we're going to cut one strip. And then we're going to cut a second strip. Exactly the same. And we're going to do these back to back with some tape. Okay, so let's just put this to one side and I'm going to do this with, um, I'm going to use just general double sided here because it's a little more forgiving and not quite as sticky as our red um, high tack tape. So it means if you don't get it quite lined up, You've got the you've got a chance of, of prizing it apart. Um, okay, so again, like we did with the sides of the bag, take the um, backing off just a little bit of the way on both ends and fold it back like that. So now we're going to put this on to here. So we're going to line them up like that, and don't forget if you've got an extra bit, you can trim it off after. So as long as you've got one side at least lined up, because I think I've gone a little bit extra here on one end, but that doesn't matter because I can trim that off. Okay, so now we have like a, a double handle and I've got a tiny little bit there. And this is the good thing. Trimmer will chop just a tiny, tiny amount off there. So let's get my blade to the top. Just drag it down like that. There we go, perfect. And then that will become our handle. Now this is quite quite firm now, but it's quite flexible as well. Um, that's two pieces of adorable scoreable matastic together, so you can see how how good it is. And that is going to sit inside the bag like that. Okay, so you can then see how it comes together. So we're gonna put red tape on again. This will hold it. Um, another thing as well, you can also use some of the construction glue. You could put construction glue over the top of the tape actually um, to give you a little bit more time to get it in place. Right, okay. So let's get this off here. So I'm going to take both pieces off here. As you can see, for this whole demo, I have actually worked on the scoreboard. I'm using it like a desk which it was never intended to be used as. But if you've got your mat, then that's where it comes into its own because the mat um, slots into that inch panel. And if you've got a small crafting area, then this is perfect. Okay, so now we've got our bag, our chunky bag with a really big chunky handle. Um, I just love the feel of that. You know, you could do uh, treasure hunts with these for Easter. There's all different kinds of ways of using it. So what I want to do now is I want to make the little panel that comes across the bag to act as a fastener. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to cut this. I think we'll go with the two inches. So again, I'm going to use the piece that we had left from the handle on the A4 uh, card. So we're going to do a two inch strip. And if you keep to really kind of basic measurements, like, you know, ones, twos, threes, it's so much easier to craft. Because now what I want to do is cut this little V. So we're going to line it up on the board here. I turn it over, mark the centre point at one, and then mark the centre point at one here. Turn it round. So this is just so that I know where my 
um, cuts are going to be to form my V for the strap that goes across the top of the bag like that okay and then we're going to take this and we're going to look at where we want to score it so that it comes across here so I'm going to score this at half an inch at this end Okay, so I'll just throw my score tool down, there it is. So we do half an inch, okay? And then the bag is two inches thick, remember? So we need to go to two inches like that. And then we will fold this, fold this. And just press that down nicely, okay? And then this will slot in here. So the back will go there and then this panel will come out here. So that then gives us our little kind of um, closure on the bag. So again, some red tape on here. And have we still got some viewers, Emily? Because I've gone way over my time here. I, told, I knew I would. Is it fine? It's got plenty. Everyone's really enjoying it. It's got um, someone from France, Christine Keats, who... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says that um, he found to be great for charity day. <gasps> Perfect. And she said, thank you very much, Sheila. Well, thank you for watching and for your comments. We appreciate them. And as this is our first kind of, you know, um, technique um, Tuesday, we weren't sure how it was going to, to go, obviously, because there were so many things I was... Last night when I got in, I was, I'd been thinking about it, I'd been working on it in the afternoon and I was really tired, I ate my tea, I didn't even have a brew after my tea, fell asleep, I was asleep by half past six, on the couch and then I woke up at half past eight and I thought, right, okay, I need to go and bring my stuff into the, from the car and start to do a little bit more figuring out of what I need to cover tomorrow. I think it was really important um, that we covered the... Um, you know, the advantages of the scoreboard, the the whole um, premise behind it, everything that's gone into it so that we could make it perfect for you. Um, so it was important that we did that. And then just to let you know that it, how locally it is, um, has been made. Now I've caught a circle here. Oh, I've got my punch because I've moved the machine. So I've just got a punch. This is gonna go on the top here and that will become your light little button. Now, if you want to, you can, like I did with the original one, I poked four holes in it and then I threaded twine through to make it look like um, a proper cardboard button. So you can do that, but that's our little button. Now I think, have we got time, Emily, for me to just show how to put the pocket on? Is that okay? Because it would be nice to put the pocket on and people can then use that whether they put crayons in it. Again, that's another little thing. You could put crayons in the pocket and you could put a little um, colouring book in there as well. And we'll show you how to do the tag because that is really basic. Okay, so from that same piece of cardstock that we um, had left from that A4 sheet, remember we've only used so far two, we'll have used two A4 sheets, I think, to make this whole thing. Um, so it, it's not very much really, um, so, and, a, and an odd scrap. Yeah, in fact, it was two A4 sheets because this was the, uh, was it, th did we go into three? We went, we went into three. I do apologise, we did go into three so that we could do the sides um, as well. Um, so I have got some little bits left over. So I want to do the pocket here now. You'll see the pocket that I've got here. Um, if I measure this, okay, this pocket, so let's just grab my ruler and we'll measure this pocket. So the pocket is, oh, let's get the inches side here, um, five inches, okay, by um, almost two. So what I'm going to do, show you how to do the pocket, because we have to do a couple of extra folds on this. So the pocket's five inches, so what I need to do is add, um, how can I explain this? Okay, I'm going to just do it and and tell you as I go along. Right, so what I'm gonna do, I've just got this extra piece here. So before I cut it, I'm gonna actually just go along and score. So I, and this is how I got the original pocket. I score at half and I score at one. Okay, and then the pocket that we just measured was five inches. So we add five inches to the one, bringing us to six. We score at six, six and a half and seven. Okay. 
So now what we need to do is we want to um, do the height of the pocket, which was almost, did we say it was almost two inches? It was one, one and a half. Okay, so if I turn this round, um, I am going to score at half and then one. Okay, and I'm, you'll see what I'm doing in a minute. Okay, so this panel here now is going to make our pocket. So we can cut this piece off. We don't need this piece. Okay, so let's chop that off. Really? Yeah, we've had Love Me Show, great show, absolutely brilliant show. Oh, I'm so inspiration and technique. Oh, I'm so pleased. That's really kind of you. Thank you, everybody. Um, now then, we said that that pocket here. I want to keep bringing this in, so I, so I explain as best I can. Um, even though we're not here in in person with, or with you in person, um, that pocket measured one and a half inches. Now, because my bag varies differently, uh, very slightly, should I say, because of the size of my bag here and my closure, I'm going to make that pocket two inches, so it comes up a little bit higher on my diff my yellow bag. Okay, so what I've done is. Where I did those first two score lines at half an inch and then one inch, I've allowed two inches here and I'm going to trim off this excess. Now it'll make more sense in a minute, I think, when I cut it for you and show you what we have. So you're probably thinking, why on earth has Sheila done so many score lines? So what we want to do now, we are going to score, we've scored, sorry, we're going to fold. So fold along all the score lines okay at both ends the short ends and the long end and then we're going to cut some little panels out okay oh my goodness can you hear my tummy rumbling emily it's going mad i haven't had a snack this morning it's going crazy <laughs> okay oh, i bet it picks it up on the mic and everything if we've what's that your, your microphone's making a funny noise again sheila no it's not it's my tummy um <laughs> okay so now what we need to do we need to fold our pocket so that it sits on here and so that we have a base panel so what we need to do we need to cut some little sections out now on my original one what i did and you'll be able to lay this down and do you know what <laughs> i was just thinking i knew right this is funny this is going to make you laugh i wanted to on here i've put a velcro dot Okay, so I wanted to do the same with this one and I knew I brought Velcro dots in, I didn't know where they were and I put them in the packet, in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so it, is, it has been quite useful as this bag. So we can put a little Velcro snap under there in a minute just to keep that bag closed. So let me go back onto the pocket here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in. We need to have a piece that goes along the back there and we need to have a side so that we can put things in the actual pockets so what we're going to do is we're going to cut along this line here so along this centimeter line here okay so just so that we have that bit there let's cut that one out so we have the cube that we've taken out of there so we have that section so we know now that that will fold up and we can connect that. Now we need to do the same again because we need to make sure that this panel goes here like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut, um, right, there's two, two different ways of doing this. So if I cut this here and I cut this here, you will now see that that tucks in like that. If I turn it this way, it'll be easy, won't it? Like this. And this, so this is what you need to do to create that pocket so it will stick. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it does. I'm talking to you like you can answer me and you can't, but I'm hoping that makes sense. So now we need to do another little cut. So we're going to do another cut here and another cut here. So that when we fold this round, these will all attach inside of one another. Okay, like this and then they will go flat so that we can attach it into onto the base of the bag. So let me explain this now. This is going to go here. So we need to continue now with our cut. So if we cut right to the end there, and you will figure this out when you are doing it. You might do it slightly different. You might do the cuts along that way. Um, everyone sees it slightly differently. 
Okay, so now we can tuck these in and this now then creates our little pocket to go on the front. So let me show you this inside here now. You can see where I have folded this. We can cut these extra little squares off here. All right, so if we cut that extra square off and then this is where it makes a little bit more sense because we then not got lots of overlapping. Okay, so we've now got a little thing that sits like that and we tape it and then we tape it in. So has that made sense? I hope it has. It's going to be fun writing step-by-step -step instructions for this, I can tell you, um, just because I um, have not got as many words in step-by-steps as I have in, um, in, in, in written form. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to give you as much information, but I'll do my best. Okay, so let's get my poke tool here and let's do this. So we're tucking this one in, this one is going here and that will attach to it and the same on there. So, a bit more tape on that one. We need to make sure it's secure. And then, all right. Okay, so let's tape all this on. And then we're gonna use red tape to actually connect the, the pocket to the bag as well. Okay, so let's do that and that. And then the same with this one and this one. And don't be afraid of, you know, putting tape on, especially if you're going to put things in the bag that may um, add some weight to it. Um, you know, be quite um, generous with your tape. So now we've got that. And now this needs to attach with the tape onto the bag. So let's do that. Okay, so we and what you can do now, you can actually do um, you can actually do the whole of the of the tape like that because it's strong tape and it will keep it where we put it. So let's do. If any of you do make this bag, um, please send us some pictures. Please let us know what you've what you're using it for or what you've done with it or who you're giving it to. If you if you can modify it in any way to make it better and easier which I know you will probably, some of you out there will be, be doing that now. You'll be thinking, well, I could have done it that way or I would have done it that way, and that's absolutely fine. Remember, this is your creation with your scoreboard and your cardstock and your imagination, um, and that's what makes it um, fun and makes it a little bit more kind of unique and individual. Hey, we could, because we were going to give you a homework challenge what we'll do, let's give you the option. The original homework challenge was going to be for you to make something on your scoreboard with, and it can be a bag, it can be a card, it can be a box, it can be whatever you want it to be, but we wanted it to have no more than eight score lines. Um, so that'll give you something to think about. If you fancy a challenge and you want to do that, you can do that. Or if you're at the stage where you want to just actually make the bag then um or you want to try making the bag then make the bag that's fine whatever you want to do um you, you might not even want to do a homework challenge you might want to just go and lie down and you know do a crossword or something but we would like you to get involved um if you would like to right the final little thing we want to do on here now is if you notice on this one here i've actually torn um, a piece of cardstock. So take some of your, let's have a look, of your um, matastic that you've made your bag with. Tear a strip. You don't have to do this, but I love doing this. I love tearing cardstock. And this is going to go here to make it look a little bit more fabricy. Okay, I'm going to cut it off there. That's going to uh, be taped on. We can just use our regular tape for this because it's not, um, you know, holding the bag together in any way. So it's just a bit of decoration. You might want to put some of your gemstones on. You might want to cut one of your borders from your dies. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of things you can do. And I'm going to do it so it's just slightly down from the top so we have a little bit of a gap. So we're still showing you the, the pink and the yellow like that. And then the last thing to do 
is with some of our scraps we had left over, let's just do a little card. So I've got a piece of cardstock left over here that probably measures, I'm guessing, two and a half by three and a quarter. This is where the maths come in now. Three and a quarter. So Emily, what's half of three and a quarter? Um, oh my goodness, I'll tell you what, I'm going to guess that it's, you can do it by notches actually, you can count the notches, this is me and my rubbish maths, okay, I'm going to go with one and a half and a notch, what would that be, um, one and five, one, two, three, or six eighths, five eighths, six, six. Yeah. perfect, <laughs> I just did it by looking at the notches everybody, so it's, you know, it can be done. And then again, we're going to do a little piece of that to match on there. We will grab a quick piece of twine to actually um, hang it on with. Okay, let's put a little piece there like that. Trim it off so it's all tied in like that. And then... Oh, I think I might have a break down here because I've only got purple and red twine. I will grab some ribbon out of this little box then. So we've got a little um, card here, which again, doesn't matter about the size of that. What I'm going to do is take my um, screw hole punch and look at the state of my desk here. I haven't even got a tiny bit of space in which to punch a hole. But again, if you've not got the screw hole punch, this is perfect for making gift tags. There we go. Punched out the hole beautifully. And then I'm going to, let's just go into the ribbon box here and see if we've got something pink or yellow that we can add our tag with. And there's bound to be in here. Of course there is, because I raided the craft room ribbon uh, area. Okay, so let's do it like we would normally do, where we put a ribbon through the hole like that and pull it out like that and then we're going to tie that around the handle here so this is making me want to um, like make this into my my lunch bag and put like my, my sandwiches in here or something in my little drinks and I have a new one every day can you imagine Make on a weekend going home and making five bags for my lunch, so I have a different one every day. What a great way of, of showing your cardstock and promoting your, um, you know, your company. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so we've got our little bow there. We've attached our little gift card. And there you have your um, easy to make chunky bag. Um, I am really pleased with that. It just, honestly, it feels so amazing holding it up. They're so, um, they're so rigid, they're so firm, but look how you can um, create those. Imagine, imagine doing those for like, for your children or your grandchildren. Put some colouring books in, put some tissue in with little toiletries, uh, put sweets in. Put, I don't know, they can, you know, when they're playing games at home and they're playing house and with their friends and stuff that you can, you can make these. I just love the fact, wrong way, that we've got um, two different ones. Um, they're very cute and look how, look how sturdy they are. They're proper sturdy. That is adorable, scorable at its finest. Um, and that's the Mattastic. We've done Mattastic on both of those, but it will work with your regular glossy, adorable, scorable. Now I have a couple of things just to tell you about. Please, um, please, uh, you know, let us know if we can make any improvements um, to what we've done today, like maybe cutting down my chat because I chat a lot. <laughs> Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say the whole thing. I was going to say, no. <laughs> the homework challenge. Okay, we've got, we've got two for you. We would either like you to have a go at making the bag if you are comfortable and if you want to. Um, and even if you modify it somewhere, you might put an extra um, flap here on the pocket. You might put a whole cover on. You might just make a backpack. Who knows? If you want to do that, that would be good. Otherwise, if you want to just have a little play around and see what you can come up with yourself, we want you to make something that has no more than eight score lines in it. So whether it be, you might just create a background, you might do something 
fancy you might do some kind of uh, weaving or something like that so we've almost set two um, just so that it allows you to join in and if you are comfortable if you feel like you want to join in but you can't do the uh, eight scores um, you might be able to do the back um, I bet there's only one, two, three, four, five. I bet there's not really more than 10 scores in the bag, to be honest. Um, so that is the homework challenge. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it today and learnt something from it. I'm actually exhausted now with talking. I need to lie down. Um, but um, we have some things to tell you about as well. We must remind you that our lovely Natalie is on television on Create and Craft on Thursday this week. It's the 17th at... Um, 4.30 p.m. and 8.15 p.m. Um, launching our new For the Love of Stamps collection, which you are going to um, thoroughly enjoy. And then she's going to drive home and she's going to get home late. She's going to get up and she's going to come in here on Friday and do um, our next Facebook Live show, Hunky Dory TV show. Um, so um, you must join her for that and try and keep her awake because she's well known for being a bit sleepy in the morning, especially if she's had a late night drive. Um, so do tune in for that show. Um, we have mentioned that we are going to add this to the rollover box. Don't forget as well the Win It Weekly competition. And then our next Facebook Live um, is here tomorrow with myself again and Dan for our live launch show. So please join us for that. Um, you might want to go and have a little lie down now and a cup of tea. And just enjoy some quiet without me going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, do let us know um, how you know whether you've enjoyed it or not enjoyed it. Um, we hope you have. Um, and please join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. with myself and Dan and Emily, of course. Thank you to Emily for fixing the microphone as well, and thank you for letting us know that it it wasn't um, as it was meant to be. Um, uh, Ashley's just said uh, we're going to post the homework challenge on your Facebook. Oh, okay. So if you look on Sheila Hunky Dory, um, we are going to put the homework challenge on there. Um, and it's up to you um, whether you join in or not. But um, we would love to see any of your makes that you've done with the scoreboard and with any of our adorable scoreable. It would be uh, really amazing. Um, we could have done a whole day today um, with everything. But don't forget the offers as well that we've included with this show. Um, today is the best day to get them. Um, to go um, along with what we have taught you, um, if we've taught you anything. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for sticking almost uh, an hour and three quarters of us. And we hope you will join us again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>